For me, this week is a week to scout. It's a week to go look for something new, not worry about the pictures I'm bringing home, leave that pressure aside, and to be out and discover. Usually when you go into a forest looking for great growls, you aren't expecting to see anything. You walk around wondering, are they here? Have they ever been here? It's neat going around exploring in that way and feeling that sense of mystery. And when that moment comes when you, you do actually find them, see them, discover that they're, they're present, they've been watching, it's really a, a, an incredible moment and really the reason that I love doing the kind of work that I do. Hey there, everybody. I hope everyone's having a great autumn. It's a great time to be out with your camera. Uh, I'm out with mine here in Central Oregon. Um, if you followed my work at all in the past, you probably know that for me, uh, wildlife photography is, is just as much or more about nature, natural history, uh, learning about wildlife and ecology, all those kind of things, as it is about the, uh, the creative side of photography and, and making pictures. And I don't know about a lot of you, but for me, oftentimes the getting pictures and being productive uh, really can interfere with the, the enjoyment of being out there. So from time to time, when I really start to fall into that mindset, um, I will go out uh, with, without the pressure of producing images and go out and scout new locations or just say, it's okay. You don't have to be out there to get, to get pictures. You have to be out there to, to have a good time and to enjoy yourself and to immerse yourself in, in the outdoors and the experience. So that's what I'm doing this week. And I've just arrived at my location. I've just set up my tent, camped out near a meadow. And one of the things that I love to do is to go out and look for things in places where, where as far as I know, nobody goes. I, I'm in a very remote area and I'm in a place where great gray owls are known to occur. And when I say known to occur, I mean in this a thousand square miles, they're known to occur. So I love studying maps. Uh, I love learning about ecology of animals and, and really trying to figure out what they're all about. And over the years, I've identified a lot of sites that I'd like to go check someday. And I am checking one of the sites at the top of my list that from what I know about great gray owls and what I know about the, the landscapes and, and ecosystems in central Oregon, I think this could be an excellent place to find them. But for the most part, I'm trying to just be out here, have a good time, and trying to unravel for myself more of the mystery of the great gray owl. And I love being out in a place where nobody else is coming. I think a lot of people that are new to photography, new to wildlife photography, new to, to exploring nature, learning about nature, rely a lot on what other people tell them and on the internet to, to find locations for birds. And obviously that can be really valuable in a lot of situations, um, but there's a whole different level from finding out where a bird is, going there, clicking your photos and leaving. You don't really gain that much. Um, what is much more valuable is really learning the ecology and natural history of a species, learning about the, the ecosystems and habitats in your area or your state, and uh, really knowing the nuances of those things. And in that way, reading books, reading scientific papers, you can be much more effective at, at locating birds on your own. And when you're lucky, you can find places that nobody else goes like this one. So before I pick up with you again and we head out into the meadows, a quick nod to like and subscribe as always. And also please sign up for my newsletter. I'll put a link in the description. And I've got a, a big project brewing. It's probably gonna take a year to develop but it's something that I think you would be keenly interested in if you're interested in both photography and natural history. It's something some of you may even be involved in at some point, if you like. Um, so sign up for my newsletter, and uh, I'll see you out in the field.
So I'm getting anxious and want to get out looking uh, at this habitat. So I'm going out a little earlier than I will expect to see any owls. Um, it's quite bright. I wouldn't expect a great gray owl to be out in this kind of bright light yet. A little bit about this area that I'm searching. Um, what I've got here is a, a long series of, of forest meadows, and it's about a two mile strip of meadows, four or five large meadows, um, kind of connected by, by snaking little meandering pocket meadows and little, little corridors of meadow between them that connect them. And it's almost completely surrounded by um, contiguous ponderosa pine, lodgepole pine forest, which is the habitat great gray owls uh, prefer in this part of the world. And these type of meadows is where they spend most of their time hunting. So because there's so much uh, uh, contiguous forest around here, I think this, this strip of meadows, if there's any owls in the area, will definitely be, be one that's utilized by great grays. Um, also important for this kind of habitat is uh, hunting perches. And right here next to my camp is really a pretty classic great gray owl hunting perch. And anytime you look at one of those in a place like this, you just imagine when was the last time an owl perched there? Has an owl ever perched there? Has an owl perched there a hundred times in the last month? Uh, is this its meadow? You know, there's just so many mysteries and unknowns as you explore a place like this. But every time I see a, a perch like this, I'm definitely thinking, wow, perfect great gray owl perch. So my search plan for this location is going to be to walk all the way to the western edge of this meadow complex. It's probably about a mile to the far end and then work my way back as it gets later and I have more of a chance of seeing owls. So it's a lot of ground to cover, but it all looks so far pretty awesome. So that's the plan and let's start walking. So I'm just making it out into the second of the larger meadows out here. It looks too perfect out here. I love the sound of the forest this time of year. It's a sound you only hear in autumn. All the migrants are gone. All the bird song is over and what's left are the resonant birds, the little roving bands of chickadees scolding and calling as they move through the forest, the alarm calls of Douglas squirrels, the hammering of woodpeckers you can hear from a great distance. So I'm approaching the last big meadow in my series of meadows here. And I think I'm going to hike about halfway down it so that I get a good view of the whole meadow and uh, just sit for a while and wait until I feel like it's late enough to start having some owl activity. And then I'll at some point start working my way back. It's actually a pretty large uh, extensive meadow, but I've got a pretty good vantage point from here to, to keep an eye on most of it. A couple things I noted that there's there's just a ton of great habitat. Uh, I keep walking by perches that I imagine a great gray owl sitting on. Um, the fields have lots of uh, real, you know little short lodgepole pines in them that can make really good hunting perches, as well as the you know down timber along the edges of the meadows, and pretty much. The entire way on my walk, um, tons of small mammal sign. Um, the ground is just full of burrows and holes and diggings. So really ripe with uh, small mammals. So good signs. It's funny when you sit in a place like this, great grays are, are really patchily distributed. Even in good habitat, um, your chances are, are not great. You can easily imagine there's there's no birds here. Um, and then two minutes later, you see one and you're just blown away that this is one of their spots. Wow. 
I've got a great gray. I was sitting here trying to shoot a chipmunk and I glanced behind me and I saw these fluttering uh, backlit against the far, far end of the meadow, against the, the darkly shaded conifers. And I took a look and it's a, a great gray and he's repeatedly making short flights and then diving back down into the grass. I took a shot just to, to show you um, from a distance, it's all heat shimmer still. The sun is really quite high still, I'm surprised. But super excited, there's an owl here. So I'm gonna work my way up the meadow's edge really slow and easy. Not planning to get very close. If he decides to come close to me, that's great. But I'd like to get out a little closer. Watch him punt. Maybe get some shots of him backlit in flight against that dark bank of trees. I'm pretty satisfied that I've got enough beautiful great gray owl portraits in my life. So try to go for some stuff that's a little more unique, dynamic, different. And for the most part, that involves maybe a little wider, a little more behavior, playing with the light, some of that kind of stuff. Great gray owls primarily hunt from stationary perches. They'll go from perch to perch and listen and look, mostly keying in by hearing on small mammals that are down in the grass or under the ground. They'll often kind of kite down from their perch, floating down like a kite, and then at the last second go into a little dive and uh, shoot their feet out right below their face. And they'll actually hit the ground pretty hard sometimes. So when they're hunting, they're usually on these fairly conspicuous perches, just listening intently, waiting for their next meal. He's uh, hunting on both sides of me now, so he's backlit some. Sometimes he's in front of a dark background, sometimes in front of a light background, sometimes frontlit. So I'm pretty much just setting my exposure for the brightest grass out here. So that's full sunlight. And uh, I'm missing a few things for sure because of that. But uh, I think I might have gotten a couple little shots I like. Um, here he comes again. So I'm just going to keep uh, watching this bird. Oh, he's hit the ground hard. <laughs> Pretty f***ing amazing. That was pretty amazing to watch. I just got to watch that owl hunt for about an hour. He caught something and flew up into the, the shaded side of the meadow and ate it, and he was actually tearing something apart. Usually they can swallow just about anything that they catch. So I'm not sure what he caught, but uh, he was over there eating for a bit. And then, uh, went off back into the forest. So I've got a bit of a walk to get back. And the sun is just dipping behind the trees. So I'm gonna work my way back now, but still a chance I might find something uh, walking back. Well, I just had one more little piece of magic tonight. I came in the meadow where uh, my tent is and the light's pretty low, but there was another owl perched on top of a lodgepole pine and it swooped down to try to catch something and literally landed on my uh, perch right here that I was talking about at the beginning of this video. And it's, it's pretty much unbelievable. Um, yeah. 
it seems unbelievable, but it happened. Um, so the owl's up, up on the other side of the meadow now. The, right, the light's really low, but the, the full moon's coming up. Probably can't see it. Um, so I'm going to go over there and watch him and uh, just sit here in my little meadow and enjoy and end the day the way I started it. Um, just loving being out here. But it was pretty magnificent to, uh, to look at this spot on the map for so long and then show up here and, uh, and have these, these owls. It's just, a, and to have this one sitting here is just like pretty much mind blowing. So I'm gonna go over there and give him one last look, uh, him or her, I'm not sure this one looked a little bigger. Um, yeah. Thanks for coming along. As a wildlife photographer, I have to keep reminding myself to slow down and remember what led me here in the first place. A love of nature and the experience of being with a wild creature in a wild place. Yes, photos and being creative are important to me, but they shouldn't be allowed to diminish the experience. Years of study and intuition brought me to this place, but luck always plays a part. Luck in finding what you're looking for and luck in being in the right place at the right time. I got lucky here. Sometimes the universe throws you a little magic when you need it most. <laughs>